Alright guys, this is going to be a different type of video today. Now, if you've been a, a fan of my channel for a while, you've probably noticed that I haven't uploaded it in a couple of weeks. Ooh, look at this uh, cool spawn I got. Yeah, I'm doing a live commentary, alright? I didn't record this footage like before doing this. This is live on the spot, baby, because I wanted to play some Minecraft. Anyways, though, so yeah, I haven't uploaded a video in a couple of weeks uh, because I've been gone. I've been secluded in a bed for basically two weeks straight. And why that is, is because I've been in a gosh dang hospital. Now why have I been in a gosh dang hospital? Well, I'll tell you why. Because, well, you probably saw the title of the video. Like, you, you saw the clickbaitiness. I, I had my lung collapse, which, yeah, that kind of sucked. I'll be honest with you. Having a lung collapse is not very fun. But what sucks even more than the lung collapsing is if you gotta have surgery for it, which, spoiler alert, I had to have surgery for my lung collapse. Now, yes, I'm going to say right now, I'm fine. I'm doing all right. I'm at home, so that's why I'm telling this story. Obviously, that's why I'm playing Minecraft. So basically what happened was I was on campus, the other side of campus. That's like a 15, 10-minute drive, basically. 15-minute bus ride. I take the bus there. Um, I was over there, had my class at like 9 a.m., and I didn't think anything of it. It was just a normal day. I was in my boring uh, intro to design thinking class, which I'm going to say right now, <laughs> I'm going to come back to that class, baby. But yeah, I was in class and I was chilling. Class got over with, so I started waiting for the bus. I waited for the bus. The bus came and I got on the bus. I know, it was super, super crazy stuff. Anyways, so I took the bus, went back to the main side of campus and I was like, you know what, I'll stop right here because I want some Starbucks. Yes, I like Starbucks. I used to work in a Starbucks. Don't judge me. So yeah, I got my Starbucks. I got my venti strawberry acai lemonade. I think I got that. Either that or a pumpkin spice latte. Again, don't judge me, all right? This part of the story doesn't matter. Anyways, so yeah, I got my drink and I start walking home because my, my, my house is like a... 20 minute 25 minute walk from like this uh starbucks i would say so yeah i walk about like 20 25 minutes home so yeah i walk home and then i have a little meeting with my business professor over zoom just a little like one-on-one -on -one, 10 15 minute like conference because classes just started keep in mind and this is like an online class so she wants to like get to know us like one-on-one -on -one. so yeah i get into the zoom session and I'm thinking nothing of it. We're just like talking and like talking about the class and like our, our future goals and our major and everything. And then out of nowhere, the right side of my body, just like specifically my back, just immediate pain, like just so much tension, tension I've never felt in my life before. And I was like, like to the point where I leaned myself up in my chair and was like, oh, like that's different. Holy, are y'all seeing this like cave right here, dude? Oh my God, dude, I might actually have to go mining. Uh, anyways, so yeah, I, I get this like tension in my back and I'm like, oh my god, this is this hurts, bro I've, This is crazy and then coincidentally like a couple minutes after the the meeting was over the zoom the zoom session was over So I get out of my chair because I'm like, oh, maybe I just need to stretch Maybe I got like a tense muscle or something No, all of a sudden that tension in my back transfers to the right side of my chest as well So my whole right side of my body is tense and on top of that I try and take a deep breath because I'm getting a little anxious about this I can't take a deep breath. I feel this huge thing of tension on the right side of my body that's preventing me from taking a full deep breath. I'm like struggling to kind of breathe. And this is when I realize, okay, this might be serious. This might be bad. And I'm not the type of person to normally go in for stuff. I, for me, what I was going to do is I was going to take a nap. I was like, you know what? I'll just take a nap. And when I wake up, it'll be over. Like, I'll be fine. I'll be chilling. Because what also happened was there was no one at the house. All of my friends were in class. Like... And I don't have a car right now because uh, leading up to this event was pretty shitty. I'm not going to lie. Sidetrack. So before all this had happened in just a month, I had my car officially totaled, uh, which sucked. It wasn't even my fault. So I don't have a car. Uh, someone attacked one of my shopping accounts and bought an Xbox. It's kind of crazy how they can take out, you know, $600 on the spot. But to get that money back into your bank account, it takes like two weeks kind of crazy how the process works with that and then on top of that a girl i had been seeing for the last month uh out of nowhere dropped me so we had been seeing each other for like a month month and a half and uh it wasn't like anything super serious you know we had some we we did some under the under the cover stuff and we had a little bit of fun we had a lot of plans for future things we even talked about going to electric forest which was like a year in advance but then um she hadn't really been talking to me for a couple days and I called her out on it because I was just concerned. And she said, oh, well, we're not dating. And plus, sometimes I just need a break from texting people. 
And she's like, oh, I have a friend coming over tomorrow. Sorry if I'm busy. Yeah, turns out the that quote-unquote friend that was coming over was a new dude. Because on the next day, after that dude had came over, she randomly texted me saying, hey, had a great time last night. Heart emoji. By the way, you left a shirt and your leftovers. And yeah, she told me that it was a new guy she had been seeing. And then she removed me. And this was like two days before that had happened. I'm about to die from this skeleton, bro. My, my pickaxe broke, bro. I, I, I'm dead. I'm dead from the skeleton. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy I just died from that skeleton. Why did my pickaxe break right then and there, bro? Anyways, so yeah. Uh, Jules, if you're watching this video, fuck you. Uh, it kind of hurt also because she was very attractive. I'm not a very attractive man. And so uh, when I have a, a very attractive girl giving me attention for a month and a half and then uh, does that, it kind of hurts. Especially since uh, a couple days prior, she promised that she wouldn't ghost and drop me, which uh, she ended up doing. Also, is the game volume loud? I feel like the game volume is probably really loud, but you know what? I'm too lazy to change it. I feel like this video is all over the place. You know what? I'm, I don't do this kind of stuff, alright? Like, I'm new to this, alright? Lay off me. But yeah, anyways, but one person decided to give me a ride to the urgent care. I go to the urgent care, they take an x-ray, they find out I have a new more thorax on my right lung, on the top of it. And, yeah, that basically means I had a collapsed lung, and I needed to go to the hospital ASAP. So I got on a little ambulance ride, like, 10 minutes away to the hospital, and they tell me, they're like, alright, we're gonna, like, give you a little time and see if it seals up. Uh, spoiler alert, later that night, later that night, they did, it did not seal up, alright? Later that night, it did not seal up at all. Later that night, it got worse. They took another x-ray, that hole got bigger. And so at midnight, yeah, at midnight, they tell me, You're, we're gonna put a chest tube right in the middle of your chest. So yeah, and that experience wasn't very fun. It stung when they did the, the numbing stuff. Also, I have no idea where this cave is that I died. Alright, looks like daddy's starting over, alright? You know, it's not like we had much anyways. Damn, that kind of sucks, so I really wanted to explore that cave. I guess I'm just stupid, and I really don't want to rewatch the footage. Anyways, so what ended up happening was, yeah, so at like midnight, uh, they pulled me aside, they put some numbing stuff on my chest, which, uh, <laughs> it hurt, it hurt like a bee sting, and on top of that, it didn't really numb my chest that much, because then, when they put the tube in, oh my god, it hurt. I literally said out loud, oh, I feel that in my back. And for the next two weeks, little did I know that that back pain, that back pain in the right section of my back would hurt for the next two weeks straight. It's still not completely gone, by the way. Anyways, though, so yeah, I come back at midnight, and they gave me a little uh, medical fentanyl. And that medical fentanyl uh, wasn't anything crazy, if I'm being honest. It just kind of made me content. But yeah, so I come back and uh, with this little little dangling, dangling uh, chest tube. And they tell me, yeah, so all we can really do is suction out the air in your chest. Because what happens is when you have a collapsed lung, the pain comes from the air being trapped in between your lungs. And so they tell me, yeah, we're going to suction out this air and see if it like heals on its own. So for the next week, week and couple days, they keep trying to take the suction off. The hole gets bigger. And it's, it's just a continuous loop. They put the suction back on. My, my pneumothorax starts healing up. They take the suction off, the pneumothorax gets worse again. And so eventually they tell me, they tell me I need surgery, like surgery, surgery. And th this scares me because I have never had surgery in my life. The only time I've ever had surgery was for my wisdom teeth. And, and it wasn't bad, all things considered. These cows are really loud. I might actually kill some of them soon. I need some meat. Uh, yeah, so flash forward, when they tell me I need surgery, they tell me I'm going to have it at 8.50 the next morning. And this, this is at like 9, 10 at night, so I'm kind of like terrified, alright? I'm terrified of like, okay, this is happening way too fast than like I anticipated all this to happen. Oh dang, it's becoming nighttime out right now. Dang, okay, we're gonna just do that. But yeah, surgery comes around, and I'm like shaking. Like literally on the way there, I'm shaking. And, they get, and they, they're reassuring me that like the surgery will be fine and everything, but I am... I am not doing good, like, mentally. I'm not going to kill this baby pig. I feel bad. He, he can grow up a little bit. Oh, baby cow, too. That's kind of cute. But, yeah, so surgery happens, and it's kind of funny because when they gave me the Anastasia, they gave me, like, the microdose at first or whatever, and they said, oh, it's just going to feel like a cocktail. Like, you're not going to really, like, get knocked out right away. And I, I kind of believed him because I was like, oh, like... When I had my wisdom teeth taken out, they kind of did the same thing. They kind of gave me a little microdose, and I remembered that. I clearly, as they remember, like, I was being a little, I was being a little goofy, laughing, talking, and stuff like that. And so I figured, like, oh, it's going to be the exact same. 
yeah, no, what ended up happening was that, that, that shit knocked me out instantly, bro. I was just out. I was, I, I, I next thing I knew, I was back in that same, like, room, kind of, like, out of it, but I had no pain. That Anastasia really worked. Whatever, whatever else they gave me, too, I had no pain, but little did I know, the next few days, probably the next, like, three, four days, oh, my God, I was in the worst pain I think I've ever been in my life, because I've had, like, some pretty bad, like, dental stuff in the past where that's hurt. But oh my goodness, dude, that, this pain was on another level, dude. Basically, with this pain, once the Anastasia started wearing off, and I was switched over to basically just Tylenol and Oxycodone, which also Oxycodone, uh, thankfully I didn't get addicted to it, uh, first of all, but that stuff really didn't, like, I don't know, it didn't really make me loopy, it kind of just made me, like, have a little less pain. The pain that followed was, for like three to four days straight, even when I took my painkillers, I would feel in my right corner of my back, like someone like, you remember in like kindergarten when the, the weird kid named Marcus would like give you snake bites out of nowhere, you know, where like they twist your arms and it would kind of hurt. It was like that in the, like underneath my right shoulder blade, but like a million times worse and it wouldn't go away. I remember one night, <laughs> one night I woke up at like four in the morning with this immense pain there. And I called three times, and like for a nurse to come, three people answered me and said they would come shortly. Three times in over an hour, and no one came. No one came. Well, I'm just sitting over here, like borderline, like crying. But you know, I'm trying to be like Andrew Tate over here. I'm trying to be a man and be like, nah, this pain will like define who I am, or I don't know. I I don't even think Andrew Tate's like a thing anymore. I don't really hear like the the twelfth graders talking about it anymore. Sorry, that was like a big disrespectful thing to say to 12th graders. I don't think 12th graders are watching Andrew Tate. I think it's more like middle schoolers. So my apologies. I was once uh, I was once also in the 12th grade, so I understand. But yeah, the reason why this back pain was happening, I found out later on, was because of the second chest tube. This one was a lot bigger and was inserted into my side. And the reason why I know that is when they eventually pulled it out, which, fun fact, when they put chest tubes inside you, they don't numb you, they don't put you under when they remove it. Nah, what they do is they just rip that shit out, bro. They rip it out like a lot, like you're starting a lawnmower, bro. And it's kind of funny, because the big one, when they removed that one, didn't hurt at all. I, I felt so much relief because that back pain was just instantly, like, gone. But the ironic thing is that the smaller chest tube that was put in almost immediately when I got to the hospital on the first day, that hurt when that got removed. And I don't know why, because that thing was super tiny, super thin, but the big chest tube, that, that was just no problem. Anyways, yeah, so when they removed that, that was just instant relief, and I felt so good. The next day, too, they removed the smaller one. They took some x-rays, and they found out that I was all good, baby. I was all okay to go home. And so flash forward now, I've been home from the hospital for about a day. I feel all right. I'm not going to lie, I'm still pretty freaking sore. I find that my side is just really sore. It's like I worked out immensely and pulled a muscle, and that muscle is just not going away. And also on top of that, sometimes when I cough or sneeze, oh my god, that the, the, the pain there just gets so worse. It's like a flash of pain for like two seconds. But other than that, I've been doing pretty all right. Not gonna lie, this experience has kind of changed my outlook on some things. Before this, every a lot of things have been going bad in my life, as I explained earlier. Just a month of just bad shit happening. But you know what? I, I'm starting to think that maybe, maybe this was something that was needed. Oh, and before before I finish this video, I gotta get back to, I gotta make a full loop and get back to the intro to design thinking professor, which I'm not gonna name. I haven't named my university, haven't named the professor's name. Ha I won't do any of that, just in case. But I'm just gonna say right now, uh, so I'm a university student. I'm taking five classes this semester, and four of my five professors were really understanding throughout this whole thing. I emailed them while I was in the hospital f at the beginning, told them I was trying to keep up to date with my schoolwork, and all of them were understanding, except for my design thinking professor. He didn't answer a single goddamn email all week. The only time he answered was once I actually told him I was going to surgery. The night that I found out I was going to surgery, I asked for an extension. I sent the same email to all my professors. All of them answered me, and the four of the five that answered me previously were really nice about it. They were like, yeah, you can have an extension, of course. But my design thinking professor, he finally emails me back. And what does he email me back with? He basically tells me I should drop out of his class. I want to pull up this email, but this little baby zombie is just following me, and it's kind of pissing me off because I don't want to die right now. All right, we should be safe down in this cave. 
Okay, yeah, I have the email up here. Yeah, so he basically told me because it's early on in the semester and I missed two class sessions, two lectures, I should drop out. And on top of that, the closing statement of his email. Oh my god, this this man is a straight class act. This guy is just an asshole, bro. I don't oh, I can't, I don't even have words for it, bro. Let me just let me just read what he said right here. Ooh, this is really cool. We should go caving down here and hopefully not die. He says, right now, of course, the best thing is to concentrate on how you can recover. Small assignments and reviewing the class materials, however, don't make up for what happens in class. I'm sorry that I missed two class sessions, two hour-long lectures. I'm sorry that your hour-long lectures centered around coffee cup designs. Yes, coffee cup designs. I'm sorry that those were so much more important than my lung collapsing and needing surgery so that I don't freaking die. I'm sorry that that mattered so much. I'm currently in the process of talking things out with uh, the advisor and the professor about this, but I think what I'm going to do is I am going to drop out of this class because you know what? <laughs> I, I I don't like this guy. This this guy is just an asshole. And I, I, I don't care if somehow he finds this video and he sees what I'm saying. You know what? I really don't care. He's like in his 60s and it, it's clear that he doesn't really care about his students. It's clear that he does not give a shit about his students. What he does care about is just getting that bag. And you know what? There's part of me that kind of respects that, honestly. At the end of the day, every little thing we do, like even doing YouTube, it's about the bag, baby. Like, But yeah, so I've been out of the hospital, and I'm doing all right. And you know what? I, I do think I should appreciate life a little bit more. Leading up to this, a lot of shit had been happening in my life, and it wasn't that fun. But you know what? At the end of the day, life doesn't last that long. And you never know when something like this is going to come and just fuck things up. Like it kind of did for me for a little bit. I still haven't emailed my professors <laughs> saying that, I, I, that I'm out the hospital I can, I, and I can catch up with uh, the weeks long bit of work I've missed. Which, you know what, like my advisor even said on the Zoom call, like I, I should be focusing on recovering for a couple days when I get out. I'll email them like Friday or something. But yeah, so moral of the story is you should appreciate life. I don't know. I, I, I'm not good at coming up with like lessons and shit oh wow this is cool what is that shiny cave thing there dude Ooh, wait before we close this video out i gotta see this i gotta see this all right well you know what i think that i think this is gonna close out the video because i'm almost dead i don't know where that shiny thing went and i'm i'm in a little i'm in a little cave thingy i made with an arrow in my head right now dude i don't even have any torches dude i should probably make some torches but yeah, I think once I rec have recovered a little bit, I'm going to get back to my normal schedule of a video a week, hopefully. I just need a little bit of time to recover. Just thought I'd make this little quick video, which wasn't really quick. Looking back on it, this video is probably like 20 minutes long or something. I just I just like yapping, dude. I love yapping. But yeah, hopefully I return to my one video a week schedule. I miss making content. I, mi I miss making videos. I miss I miss y'all's pretty faces. and, and, and <laughs> I love y'all, man. But yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. My.